before we started dating, I never felt like I had to get married for my life to be complete. But absurdly early in our relationship, I knew I had to marry you. I have known you for over 15 years, and I still cannot believe that you exist in this world. You are an impossible combination of incredible traits packaged into one human. You are intelligent, handsome, strong, capable, competitive, and charming, but humble, self-reflective, empathetic, thoughtful, and caring. Lauren, my love, I have lost track of how many times I have started to write you the text message, I love you, only to mistype, I live you. At first, this was a slightly irritating reminder of my millennial shortcomings, but I've come to realize it's hardly a typo at all. In fact, to borrow from another, I wasn't aware that words could hold so much. I didn't know a sentence could be so full. You challenge and help me to be a better person, to compost, to rekindle friendships I have neglected, and not to look away from social injustice just because I'm worn out. You make every one of my days better. You are inextricably part of everything that I do and that I am. Wrapped in each other on the couch for our Saturday morning pastries and reading. Away for weeks on a mission, hearing you in each song I play. Going for a long bike ride, finding myself singing a made-up song about you. Sharing the stick shift so we can hold hands while I drive. Together and apart, you are constant. I spent a few Saturday mornings combing through my collection of books, looking for words to help inspire these vows or passages for our ceremony. I didn't have much success. Half of the books on my bookshelf are about war, and the other half are not about war, but are somehow just as grim. I realized that books describing a love like ours do exist, but that I have refused them space on my bookshelf or in my mind because I thought anything this good had to be a work of unrealistic fiction, and that to believe in such stories would mean having a skewed understanding of human beings and inviting disappointment. Instead, somehow I have ended up with you, the most wonderful person I could dream up as my human, standing across this aisle from me. When I think of my sister, I picture her as the tough, strong-willed little girl she was. Megan told me a story about Michael as a college-aged adult. He and Lex were fighting, so she sent him to his room. And he went. We have this story we've told many times in my family of Lauren at four years old. My mother sent her to her room and ended up having to drag her there, kicking and screaming. She was not going, and you couldn't make her. I doubt my mother thought this at the time, but I'm convinced the world needs more strong-willed little girls. I've watched Lauren grow and mature over time. She's still one of the toughest people I know. But she's also someone who knows when to be tough, how to articulate her beliefs and thoughts, and how to listen. Lauren, you are my favorite person. I have such respect for you and the person you've become. I'm also beyond grateful that Lauren has you, Michael. You are a unique blend of toughness and softness. You train for Ironmans, but also periodically burst out into song. And I couldn't imagine anyone else so able to match and balance Lauren. To see her so sure of your commitment to each other and to the life you're building together is a special thing to see the way you support each other, agree, disagree, and simply have so much fun together is a blessing.
In addition to being my big brother, Michael, or Moo as I call him, has always been one of my best friends. When we were little, we each had this experience of being on the playground at school and having to face mockery from the other kids because we had confessed to loving our sibling. Neither of us recanted. We've always had the capacity for vulnerability with each other. We talk about the hard, personal stuff. We feel comfortable crying around one another. Well, Michael feels comfortable crying anywhere, but I've had the honor of being someone he has turned to when wrestling with big emotional decisions. Moo, I remember a conversation we had before you started dating Lauren, but in which Lauren's name came up. We were talking about the people in our lives who we just laugh hysterically with, the people who bubble up our joy. At one point I said, maybe you should be with someone like that. Lauren, I knew before I'd spent any real time with you that you were a kindred spirit, a fellow fierce feminist who shared my love for Kenya and invisible cities. Getting to know you has revealed additional unexpected qualities to love. You make fun of Michael's inability to get his food from his plate to his mouth in the exact way that I do. And as Victor said, Lauren is this tiny, beautiful woman, but like, she can beat you up. Lauren and Michael, I'm so glad that you have been among the few people Victor and I have spent considerable time with over the course of the pandemic, even if it wasn't exactly in the way we planned and hoped for. We've had life-giving conversations that have helped me ride out the ups and downs of the past year, and planning this ceremony has helped me find joy in an otherwise really difficult time. I'm so, so very happy to be participating as the two of you take this next step. It's such a partnership that I sometimes feel like I lose track that there was a time before you and me. More accurately, you are woven into the emotional fabric of my memories, as though we have shared everything. I promise to continue sharing. Sharing my dad jokes and puns and everything turned into a song. Sharing dances with you in the kitchen, and the car, and the grocery store, and any line we stand in. Sharing incredible adventures, because you are the best traveler and finder of hidden gems. Sharing the room with you, even though you scream into the phone like an old person. Sharing my heart and my head, my love, joy, sadness, insecurity, and keeping room in both for all of yours too. Sharing sneaky hugs and the smell of that one spot on your neck. Sharing that snug life. Sharing turns being the rock when the other is adrift. So come, my love, we have oceans to sail. I love you. I live you. As incredible as your love is, and as much as you do look like a Disney prince in your navy dress uniform, I know that no love story is a fairy tale. I believe, as I know you do, that maintaining a relationship requires attention, compromise, and care. So I vow to recognize and celebrate the small and large successes with you in every day and spontaneously revel in the glory of our love at the best of times. At difficult times, I promise to carefully maintain our love, assuming the best of you rather than the worst, even when we disagree, seeing your good intentions and humanity. I will try to continuously grow as a person and as your partner. Whether that means something as small as remembering not to leave my shoes lying around the house or as large as controlling my temper when confronted. I promise to challenge you and help you achieve the goals you have set for yourself as an individual and for us as partners. I love you. <laughs>